With winter closing in and riding conditions rapidly becoming miserable, it's time to take a look at the year. 2021 has been an interesting year in some respects. I finally won the battle with my Panther. It no longer spreads the contents of its sump across the whole engine and has proven surprisingly reliable. So of course at the end of one 200 mile ride, when everything had gone spectacularly well, I got a puncture and had to be trailered home by my son. I've always said that a bike is no use to me unless I can ride it all day and actually go places on it without fear of catastrophic disaster. The Panther seems to have reached that state and I have some plans for some adventures together in 2022. As usual, the first part of this year was a bust for riding, for the obvious reasons. But by early April the roads were clear and the sun was out so I took the mighty Gootsy Convert out for a spin up towards Algonquin Park. It was a glorious ride, just long enough to feel as though I'd been out somewhere, so that by the time I was home, I was happy to park the bike. Those of you who very kindly watch all my videos will have seen some of the clips and photos that follow before, so please bear with me. I'll try not to repeat myself too much. The Convert isn't a fast bike, but it has a lovely lazy gait, which makes riding roads like this a real pleasure. Sadly, mine developed a wiring problem during one of my rides and now sits idle until I track down the problem. It's probably just a broken wire somewhere, but that's what winters are for. Racing away from the big lake, there's a whole slew of thunderstorms down by lake. Apparently there's less activity as I head north. Sometimes I do wonder about my sanity. Why choose a massive road couch when you know you have 50 miles of gravel road just to reach your destination? Still, the Suzuki Cavalcade managed the loose gravel far better than I expected and I reached Missinabe Provincial Park without incident. The return journey was a 16-hour marathon, but with such a smooth, comfortable bike and virtually empty roads, it was pure joy. But I couldn't leave my trusty Eldorado mouldering in the garage. So in July I headed back to Northern Ontario for a little back road exploration. You might think that a 50 year old touring bike is an unwise choice for this kind of riding. But the Eldorado usually manages quite well. This is the first time I've dropped it, or any bike, in an awful long time. Still, no damage done to the rider or the bike, and I was soon heading back down the long highway to home. Not all was plain sailing though, and when you ride older bikes you have to expect and be prepared for misadventure. In late August I'd ridden the 400 or so miles up to the annual Ontario Gutsy Riders Rally in Levine. It's something I do most years to see a few old friends and drink a pint or two at the Levine Tavern. 
This year, on the way home, the lower generator belt pulley started to fail, wrecking the drive belt. Like a good Boy Scout, I had a spare, but this too was ruined within 50 miles. But by running without lights or indicators, I was able to get home just with the battery providing the sparks. Try that on your modern bike. All these minor adventures are fodder for my series of books, the most recent of which I published in August. But I'll try not to drive you away with promo right now. Let's get back to some back roads. With various border closures limiting my range, I spent most of the late summer and early fall exploring with a, within a couple of hundred miles from home on the Eldorado and the Panther. It's surprising how many minor roads weave through the forests of eastern Ontario. I've yet to explore them all. As the trees began to turn, I did a little riding on the Suzuki in the highlands overlooking the Ottawa Valley. Days like this can be delightful, stress-free and unrushed. Late in the autumn, I decided it was time to sell my Moto Guzzi 750S. I'd had the bike for many years and had ridden it on numerous trips, but it never really fit me, being designed for a much more petite person than myself. Even so, I had to make sure I got a few miles in before it left my hands, so during the fall I was out riding it on many days. It's a lovely bike and I'll no doubt miss it, but sometimes, actually not very often in my case, you have to let things go. As I finish off this video, it's snowing outside. There may be a few more rideable days before spring, but I'm not holding my breath. Just hoping, and looking forward, or in this case, looking back to those lovely dry cold days when winter's on the wane and the roads are clear again. Thanks for watching. My books and audiobooks are available through Amazon. Just search for Nick Adams Motorcycle or Nick Adams Goodsey. You're bound to find me. Or visit my website at nickadamswriting.com. Ride safely.